What I'm seeing. Trump was criticized for doing an excellent job during Hurricane Harvey. Something CNN, The Guardian, they just couldn't stand for. How dare Trump get us accustomed to this inefficiency and then blindside us like this? Stupid, yes. The coverage was very stupid. But then, diehard Trump supporters said, hold my beer. In an effort to refute the constant negative press, Kofi B, Trump supporters turned their attention to Obama's terrible treatment of Hurricane Katrina and his total disregard for the people of New Orleans by not even bothering to become president for another three years. A true failure for the not yet elected Obama administration. It just goes to show, there's stupidity on both sides. This is Front and Center. Hello and welcome to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. Thank you so much for being here with us on our very first episode. I uh, do apologize for any issues with the background noise and uh, and lighting. We are doing the best we can, but we are a new podcast, so I hope that you all understand. And we're going to try to you know produce it and make it really nice so that you'll uh, so that you'll enjoy it either way. So this is a show that's meant to showcase centrist po- points of view both politically and socially. Now, when we talk about a centrist point of view, I think it's important to describe what it is, especially because it's our first episode. And I think that there is a lot of people who think that uh, political centrists are just basically apologists on steroids. And this goes, uh, I actually read an article about this uh, a couple of days ago. And it's a parody article by the Batuta Advocate. And the article's name is Private... Uh, local private educated upper middle class coward says he's a political centrist. Uh, so obviously this is a parody. And within the within the article, it says, uh, as a quote, I am a centrist because I want the ability to remain totally unaccountable for my opinions, which sometimes may be misconstrued as being politically incorrect. Life is actually pretty good right now. So the article, the rest of the article isn't that funny. But what this article gets at, and I think that it's, uh, that it's really true, is essentially that... Um, people may call themselves political centrists just because they don't want to get on anyone's bad side. And they want to kind of set themselves up with this aura of being the most wonderful uh, centrist, uh, well, not say, objective people in the world, but that's not being a centrist. So when I think of centrism, uh, being a centrist and centrist points of views, I think that it has to do more with being objective, placing praise where praise belongs, and also placing blame where it belongs. And essentially this means, and really, really importantly when it comes to political figures, that you're not sticking behind someone just because you stuck with them once and decided that they're good, and you also don't turn your back on them completely when something goes a certain way that you didn't like. So this is, a a couple of good examples of this are uh, when Colbert was doing his monologue, uh, this was a few months ago, I think, but he was doing his monologue And, you know, obviously, surprise, surprise, he was saying bad things about Trump. And he 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 referred to Trump's mouth as Putin's cock holster. (laughs) It's not the best joke in the world. It's kind of funny. But, you know, this Colbert has has been a voice on the left for a number of years and people love him. And there was an outcry to get him fired on Twitter. Like there was a hashtag fire Colbert. And it was it was just totally ridiculous. And people were just basically very, very upset because he made a, a gay joke, which is, again, I don't think it should be that big a deal. I don't think it was completely distasteful. I think that, uh, that that's, uh, that's something that is way too far uh, to one extreme. So that's definitely not what being a centrist is about. And, you know, you also see it a lot with uh, the politicians um, now, that once you like a politician, you'll stick behind them forever. I mean, sticking with the subject of Trump, I mean, Trump was uh, supposedly going to do several things that he hasn't done yet. And not necessarily that you need to turn your back on him, but uh, as a Trump supporter, if you did something for America's, America first, uh, stop you know invading countries, stop interfering in other countries, uh, I will show my tax returns after, um, after I get elected, all these things that Trump has basically said he was going to do, you know, repeal on day one, not going that, not really going that way. Um, I think that, that blame has to be placed there. You can still support him and you can still think that he's doing a good job somehow but essentially you you don't have to stick behind him just because you chose to stick behind him at some point so that's really what i think being a centrist is about and it's actually not about having more people like you probably more people will dislike you because you're you're kind of you're kind of hitting everyone but um relevant to the structure of the show this was the first part where i just kind of speak freely about a couple of issues then we move on to talk about things that i like and dislike on both the left and the right 
or uh, in conservative and in liberal aspects. Uh, so let's move on right now to talk about liberal aspects in a segment I call Left and Left Behind. So Left and Left Behind, as I said, uh, I'm going to go through things uh, in liberal uh, circles and things happening in the liberal world that I like and dislike. The ones that I like, I call Left. The ones that I dis dislike, I call Left Behind. So one good thing that I saw on the left recently was Occupy Democrats, which is an outlet that I actually really, really dislike. Um, it's as biased as other outlets are, but they're just way too too obvious about it. Um, they did something that I really liked, and essentially they, they put a video up about a social experiment. Uh, it's a TV show that's basically all uh, social experiments where they put people uh, in a situation with actors. They don't know they're actors. And they basically see how they would react to a certain circumstance. And there's a video of a black woman being very racist towards a white woman. And they want to see what people's reactions are. Uh, so I think that this, uh, that this is one of those videos that maybe a lot of people on the left wouldn't like. Because there's this uh, common misconception that, uh, that racism is only racist, racist if it's not towards a white person. And when it comes to a white person, then you can say whatever you want. Uh, and, and Occupy Democrats uh, put, put up this video with the tag, this is great. So let's watch. We're back at Denny Moe's Barbershop in Harlem, where a white barber was discriminated against simply because of the color of his skin. The white dude? What you know about this, man? But what if now things get more personal? Excuse me. Rachel is an actor playing a hairdresser who has her eye on a new customer. But Gabriel has a girlfriend, and when she shows up... Hey, baby. Hey. Do you want me to wait for you over here? It's a rude awakening for Rachel. Wait, what? You with a white girl? Baby. You dating a white girl? I'm dating a girl who is white, if that's what you mean. Okay. I don't get it, but that's crazy. The only thing crazy is you being in here. Rachel isn't pulling any punches with Christian. And at first, this woman takes the soft, comforting approach. I'm not bothered by you. Nobody over here is bothered by you. Thank you. I hope y'all don't plan on having any children. Like I said, she sounds like a real hater and she's insecure. And with that, Denise Muldrow is so upset, there's nothing holding her back. She's ignorant. No, she's not talking about me. I'm talking about you that's brushing his hair. You are ignorant. Keep your opinions to yourself because it sounds stupid. As much criticism as we went through as a people, you're going to go and do it to the next person? What gives you that right? Why are you defending a white woman, though? I don't care what she was. She could be purple. I'm defending a woman, period, point blank. That's what she is. She's a woman. Or maybe you're not. I'm sorry. She's not a woman. She's a bird. Get out of here, birdie. <laughs> This is a good example of left. Um, this is it, it's good for a couple of reasons. Uh, the very first one is that it it acknowledges something that uh, really, I mean, it it's so stupidly obvious that it shouldn't even be uh, acknowledged. But you know that's where we are now. But it says essentially that racism is racism no matter who it's directed at, and. This is uh this is you know they did a, they did a good job by by sharing this uh so I really like that but the the really really great part about this is that Occupy Democrats who uh, pander to leftists and to people who who think a certain way uh released this and they they it basically uh, uh, butts heads with uh, leftist opinion that racism is only towards anyone who isn't white and I think that this shows just an ever so slight glimmer of integrity. On, on on the part of Occupy Democrats. We'll probably never see it again. It's never been seen before. But I really like that they showed some integrity here. I mean, it was towards a leftist issue, you know, anti um anti anti racism, which is which tends to be more more on the left actively than it is on the right, even though not right isn't uh, isn't racist, but you know, it tends to be more on the left. Uh but I so I really, really respect their efforts here. I prob that's probably the only time you'll ever hear me say something good about Occupy Democrats. So good job this one time Occupy Democrats. Let's move on now to Left Behind. Now, there was a high school debate a while ago, and it's it's bad. Like, there's this one kid who just says some crazy racist things, insanely racist things, uh, with a lot of confidence, and, like, he doesn't even notice that what he's saying is outlandish. 
So uh, let's watch the video and then let's discuss it. Why do white people have a right to affirm their life? Uh, because all whites have value. Really? How? How so? Why does white life have value? Well, I think white for who? Has what? Value. No, excuse me. For who? Our argument is that white life is wrong. Why? Our argument is our argument is that we should never affirm white life. That your why, argument of just affirming all affirm life in general life? is not good, especially not good for black people when white life itself is based okay, off why of black people. Why should we affirm my life? You're probably white. I am white. Why shouldn't we affirm my life? I don't say why I have to care about your life anyway. There's no ethical reason as to why white people deserve uh, to live. For in black life means that means that white death has to occur. That's why uh, you should lose this debate and why your life ain't worth affirming. Can I kill myself, like, under your arguments? Sure. Okay. Uh, so, should Odie kill himself? Well, I don't see why not. Okay. Uh, so, why, why should we do that? How does that help? It's ethical. How is it ethical? We're all, we all have some form or another of privilege. Why does that mean we kill ourselves? Because you have white privilege. What, why does having white privilege necessarily mean I should kill myself? Why shouldn't I like struggle against the structures? That sure, struggling against the structure to... means putting yourself on the line, putting your body on the line. Do it. Affirm your suicide. That's cool. Yeah, that's very good. I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's one little form. It's one little step in the right direction. Okay, so this is firmly, firmly left behind. <laughs> Um, so obviously, first of all, this is this is pure racism. I mean, let, let, let's not call it anything else. Let's, let, there's nothing else that this video is other than bigotry and racism that this kid was saying uh, to these white kids' face that the only small step in the right direction that they can take as white people is to affirm their suicide. In other words, to kill themselves is is uh, shocking. It's awful. And uh, so let's get that out of the way. This little shit, this idiot, uh, said some really bad things. But getting back to the central issue, why do we care about what some dumbass says in some random school in the U.S.? The issue is that had this been another kid saying those comments, but about people who weren't white, if it had been against blacks, it had been against Jews, Muslims, any other group, there would have been an outcry. And rightly so, because when people say things that are racist and they and they, they they go out into the atmosphere they go out into the atmosphere of the internet where people can see them there should be people saying this is awful this is really bad and the people that called it out tend to be on the right and good job on them by the way because that's exactly what they should have done but this kid was speaking out on behalf of black lives matter and black lives matter didn't do anything to refute uh what this kid was saying basically saying Oh, uh, white people are always bad. Uh, white people, white life doesn't matter, and the only way that they can do anything right is to kill themselves. And I think that this gets to the to the heart of why some people have uh, some some negative feelings about uh, Black Lives Matter, which I think is a it's a good organization. I think they're doing good work when it comes to um, to violence against uh, against black people and racism. Uh, the issue is that they don't call out people that say ridiculous things on their behalf. And I mean, there, there's this one Black Lives Matter activist that recently released a, a list of things that a lot of people like were debating online whether it was a joke or not. I read it. I thought it was a joke initially. Turns out it wasn't. She was saying that if you are a white person, the only thing that you can do to uh, give reparations to uh, black people, even if your family wasn't a slave owner or anything, you're kind of just benefiting from the societal advantage, supposedly, that if you have property, give it to a black person. Give everything you have to a black person. And um, I mean, they're, they're just there's just a, a long list of things, but the, but it all kind of went around the, the, the property aspect and giving things to to uh, basically if you're white and you don't have any black and uh, black relatives, then you have to give everything that you have away, which makes no sense. But um, but but uh, and kind of getting sidetracked here. But essentially, that's, I think, one of the reasons that people have uh, negative opinions of Black Lives Matter, because people speak on their behalf and they don't go out and say, this is not what we're about. This is not what we think. And they should do this more. And so this kid basically telling uh, his classmates uh, in front of his teachers that uh, white life doesn't matter and that white people should kill themselves should have been met with, uh, with more opposition. So this is where the segment ends talking about lefty issues. Now let's move on to a segment called Right Not Right. And this is where we talk about issues in conservative circles. So, first of all, with the video, with the uh, with the video that I do like, this is a video from a channel called PragerU, and uh, 
this is a guy called Dennis Prager, who I really, really like. He's really smart. Uh, he's, uh, he's basically just a, a good, good conservative. And uh, this video outlines the uh, aspects of conservatism that I really like. It's basically an unemotional, objective view of the issues. Uh, and this is actually what I think keeps conservatives triggering and leftists triggered. Essentially, they, they, um, it's just so matter of fact that, you know, they, there's really no way around it. So the subject uh, is abortion in this video. Uh, full disclosure, before we go any further, I'm pro-choice dash pro-life. I know that sounds strange or just downright stupid, uh, but I'll, I'll explain my stance a little bit further when we watch the video. So let's watch. Let's talk about one of the most emotionally charged subjects there is, abortion. But in an unemotional way. Also, let's not touch on the question that most preoccupies discussion of the subject, whether abortion should be legal or illegal. The only question here is the moral one. Is ending the life of a human fetus moral? It's a scientific fact that a human fetus is human life. Those who argue that the human fetus has no rights say that a fetus is not a person. But even if you believe that, it doesn't mean the fetus has no intrinsic value or no rights. There are many living beings that are not persons that have both value and rights. Dogs and other animals, for example. And that's moral argument number one. A living being doesn't have to be a person in order to have intrinsic moral value and rights. Moral argument number two. On what moral grounds does the mother alone decide a fetus's worth? We certainly don't do that with regard to a newborn child. It is society, not the mother or the father, that determines whether a newborn child has worth and a right to live. A mother get to determine whether that being has any right to live. People respond by saying that a woman has the right to control her body. Now that is entirely correct. The problem here, however, is that the fetus is not her body. It is in her body. It is a separate body. And that's moral argument number three. No one ever asks a pregnant woman, how's your body? When asking about the fetus, people ask, how's the baby? Moral argument number four. Virtually everyone agrees that the moment the baby comes out of the womb, killing the baby is murder. But deliberately killing it a few months before birth is considered no more morally problematic than extracting a tooth. So this is a great glowing example of right. Now, as I said, I was going to go briefly into my stance, uh, so I'm not trying to have my cake and eat it too. I'm not, I'm not trying to be, you know, the, the guy from the Batuta advocate who just doesn't want to get on anyone's bad side. I do say that I, I don't like abortion. I think that abortion has uh, a lot of issues because, like the video says, in, in essence, uh, the, the, the process of an abortion is just killing a human. Now, the issue is that there are so many... Uh, unintended consequences that go along with making abortion illegal outright that I can't bring myself to support the restrictions. That being said, I think that there can be real steps taken to reduce unwanted pregnancy and that they don't have to basically restrict a person's access to a legal safe abortion in order to, to make abortions go down. I think that there are things that you can do when it comes to uh, sexual education and to uh, contraception and all these things that basically will reduce um, will reduce uh, pregnancy, unwanted pregnancy. I mean, if you see right now, there, there are kids that, that basically are having uh, unprotected sex. And well, not kids. I mean, I shouldn't say kids, but, you know, people that are below the standard age for having children. And, you know, they're, they're having unprotected sex. And they don't realize that there is uh, a risk of getting pregnant because they do certain things i won't talk about it because it's kind of gross but they do certain things that they think will make them uh, immune to getting pregnant but they don't and obviously there are there are far more risks uh with uh with having unprotected sex and just unwanted pregnancy but uh, i think it's one of the issues that basically 
people aren't educated on how to have sex, I think proper sexual education is really important. I think there are a lot of steps that we can take in, uh, in, in reducing unwanted pregnancy without making it illegal and without having to t uh, push women into having, you know, dangerous, shady abortions. And once, uh, once the issue of unwanted pregnancy is uh, very rare, then I would move to make it to restrict it to just um, rape, incest, or uh, danger to the mother's life. So now let's move on to uh, not right. So this is a video from the Vote No campaign uh, regarding the same-sex marriage plebiscite happening in Australia. And I'm not even kidding you when I say that when I saw this video, I thought it was a joke. I was waiting for the punchline. I thought, I thought that at some point uh, an actress from, the, from SNL was going to come out and say something. But, but it wasn't. And uh, so let's play the video and discuss it afterwards because there's just so much ridiculousness. But yeah, let's watch. School told my son he could wear a dress next year if he felt like it. When same-sex marriage passes as law overseas, this type of program become widespread and compulsory. Kids in Year 7 are being asked to role-play being in a same-sex relationship. You can say no. So, this is a terrific example of not right. So, what's wrong here? So, there's one thing that I agree with. Essentially, yes, it's okay to vote no. I, uh, I certainly think that if you, if you have a uh, pragmatic... Um, decision-making process inside your head that that, that defends uh, traditional marriage. That's that's your choice. I, I certainly don't think so. I think that that um, that the government should have no no place in regulating the the general status of two consenting adults signing a document. But the people can have different differing opinions, and I, I respect them uh, greatly. But the issue with this video is that it is complete and utter horseshit. It really is. Uh, so. First of all, they speak of these issues that there is no evidence to support. That the that a teacher told a kid, a boy, that he could wear a dress next year. Which I doubt, first of all, they, they, there actually were investigations into that, into the school that this woman is claiming that, uh, that, that the kid told his mom, hey, I can wear a dress next year because my teacher said so. There's nothing to support that, that, that claim. And he's the only kid, surprisingly enough, that said that that happened. And... Um, well, I mean, the, one, one, of, one of the problems here, obviously, is that when there's no evidence, but you're putting it in the commercial, people are going to believe it, and they, they, that, that kind of gets it fear-mongering. Now, another issue is that they say this thing about having kids role-play being in a same-sex same relationship, which, I, I mean, it's just such a load of horseshit. I mean, with the, the litigiousness of public schools in Australia, also in, in the U.S., but in Australia, there is no way, no way in hell that there are kids, uh, and first of all, what setting, in what setting did a teacher stand up and say, all right, now everyone put away your math binders, uh, Timmy, Tom, come to the front, pretend that you're gay together. That's stupid. So I really don't like that. It's completely ridiculous. Um, and, and basically it just kind of goes towards uh, no evidence, no context, just a soundbite. This is good. And this is what I really don't like when it comes to conservative issues and pushing, pushing conservative issues in this way is that conservative issues are above that you should have um real evidence you should have a real reasoning behind it and just basically saying uh that you know my teacher at my one school said that a kid could uh wear a dress well that shouldn't have been done without parental consent so that's one teacher should get fired but what do, first and another thing another thing it's which is really important to get at is what the hell does same-sex marriage have to do with a teacher, an idiot teacher, telling kids to do something so controversial. Honestly. I mean, if gay marriage doesn't pass, if the plebiscite has a majority no vote, I mean, would that change anything? Would those teachers all of a sudden say, oh, well, I guess I can't, I can't tell my kids to, to uh, cross-dress anymore. I, that's, that, that they're so completely separate issues. But it kind of gets at this fallacy of the, uh, the slippery slope argument. And essentially saying, if we do nothing, and if we let, you know, these horrible, you know, uh, dirty gays become, you know, just like regular people, then this is what's going to happen. And obviously there's no, there's no evidence to support that. And uh, additionally, you know, uh, homosexuality is now part of the Western world. 
uh, people, you know, we live uh, alongside um, straight people, gay people, trans people are starting to are starting to be uh, more normalized, and it hasn't created that much of a of, of a shift. And you know, the the fact of the matter is that we don't see these things happening at a large scale, and it's all anecdotal. And so I really think that this uh, this is just a, a disgusting display, uh, and I really hope that no one is basing their vote on bullshit like this. So this brings us to the end of the very first front and center podcast thank you for so much for being here with us thank you also to the unshackled for allowing us to use their platform we invite anyone who has any comments or any ideas to write to us directly at through facebook you can also tweet at us and we will read the most interesting opinions on the air we are not about ignoring people thank you so much for being with us. There's always two sides to the story, and as always, keep it central.